this. Okay, here we go. To solve, to solve a special right triangle, there is a simple pattern for each triangle, right? The first special right triangle is an isosceles right triangle, meaning that two sides are equal. If two sides are equal, then two a a a a angles are equal. So think about it, right? In a 90 degree triangle, if one of them is 90, the other two have to add up to 90. So those two, if they're equal, are 45. 45. That's why it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Yay. In a 45, 45, 90 triangle, yeah. In a 45, 45, 90 triangle, two sides are equal. Now, in geometry, they told you how to solve this pattern. I'm giving you the pattern right now, so that way we don't have to go through that whole mess. But basically what this says is, right, what this says is the two legs are equal right here. And because of the Pythagorean theorem, this third leg, a.k.a. the, the third leg, no, it's not third leg, it's the high. Hypo hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is root 2 times whatever the leg is, right? That root 2, that root 2 is going to come up a lot, a lot, a lot, okay? It's like my favorite irrational number next to pi, root 2. Here we go. So, when you're solving a right triangle that is special, you only need to know, first of all, that it's special, and second, you need to know only one side, because the other sides are workable. Yay. All right. So question in this one, that 10, is that a leg or a hypotenuse? It's a hypotenuse. So that 10 matches up to the expression x root 2. That's the x root 2 side. That's an equation. It is. So if you were to solve this equation, let me write this down underneath so you can see. So if we have 10 is equal to x root 2, how do you get the x by itself? You don't need to square nothing. Just divide. Just divide, right? Oh, I, I think I know what you're talking about. All right. So it's 10 over root 2 is equal to x, but you can't have the roots in the both sides. Top by both sides. So times root 2, root 2. We have 10 root 2 over 2. 2, a.k.a. 5 root 2 is the x, right? So, remember that the x represents the legs. Therefore, the legs are 5 root 2. Yay! Just follow that pattern every time. x, x, x root 2. That's it. That's it. Yay! But why, Miss Fleck? Pythagorean theorem, my dears, and we'll go over it again in a second. Okay? Yes, my dear. What? What happened to the x? We solved for the x. So, let me take it back. Take it back. Here we go. That, ready? That 10, right, is already the x times the root 2 with it. That's it. So the root 2 is inside that 10. So we had to extract that root 2 to find the x. And that's why we divided by root 2. Okay? Okay. All right. So, let me, okay, let me try a different way real quick. Right? Whatever side you're looking for, set it equal to the equation and then solve for x. This one, this one does matter. The 10 is 5 root 2 times root 2. The other one, no, this is the golden... The, picture right here. So you want to base it off of this, right? So when you're solving 45, 45, 90 triangles, you want to solve, base it off of that. Okay? Yeah? Let's try a 36, 90. Yeah? Okay. P.S. My very, very, very first uh, phone number when I moved out to my mommy and daddy's house was 360, 60, 90. It's like they knew I was a math teacher. All right, here we go. A 30, 60, 90. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right. Here we go. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? Say 30 plus 60 equals 90, so that makes sense, right? 30 is the smaller angle, 60 is the bigger angle. Therefore, the smaller side is across from the smallest angle, right? So the x would be the smallest side. That's always across 
from the 30. Okay. Okay. Then the next bigger one would be the x root 3, and then 90 is the biggest angle, so 2 times x would be a bigger number than x times root 3, because root 3 is like 1 point something. So 1 point something times something is smaller than 2 times something. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So 30, 69 triangle is really a 1, 2, 3 triangle. Actually, it's a 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Bless you, love. You multiply the sides by either 1, 2, or root 3. The x by either 1, 2, or root 3. So again, when you're solving these things, which side does it match up to? So that 10. That 10 matches up to the, the 2x side. All right? So when you solve, you got uh, 10 is equal to 2x divided by 2. Five, cinco, exactly. So the x is five. Yay? Okay. So now we're just mashing it up to that original triangle. The x is the shorter side. It's across from the thirty. So this has to be five. And the longer side is x root three. So the longer leg is going to be five root three. It's that easy to solve them. Once you like get going on them, it gets really really fast. Right? Speaking of getting going, you're going to practice and practice and practice and practice. Here we go. You have a classwork assignment that I'm going to give you in just a second. Um, so the, uh, the puzzle is really simple, but I do want, to, uh, want you to see, to see your work. At least solve for one of the sides and figure out from there. You're going to practice with two other folks. So there are two other people that have the same card as you. Find those people, go to, uh, go to the same uh, group, and then work together. Work together, work together. All right, we shall continue the lesson momentarily. So just putting everything together, go to the back page of your notes. Go to the back page of your notes, and we'll finish up the front page in a little bit. Okay, so let's bring this all together, okay? Yes, we are coming up to filling out the rest of your unit circle. You know, we just did the quadrantal angles. Well, the unit circle also has 30s and 60s in it. So once you understand how to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of the 30s and 60s, then you can do the unit circle like off the top of your head. It's really fun. It's really good time. All right, here we go. Yes. All right, so again, move on uh, just to the back side of this. And let's just bring it all together. Here we go. 30, 60, 90 triangle. Why is the pattern 1, 2, root 3? What is this? Here we go. Yes. All right. Why is the pattern 1, 2, root 3? Well, if you take an equilateral triangle, okay? An equilateral triangle, all the same sides, all the same angles. If it's all the same angles, then all angles are? They're all 60. They're all 60, yeah. So this would be a 60, right? And let's say you have twins, so you want to split a pizza in half, right? Um, so the bottoms still stay 60. If you split it in half, like right down the middle, these become 90s, and the tops become 30s, 30 and 30, right? Hence, that's why we get the 30 and 60 and 90 degree triangle. So 30, 60, 90 triangle comes from half of A, Equilateral pizza, yes. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, all right, here we go. Now, let's keep it simple. Yes, all right. Let's say the side of the equilateral triangle is what? Yay? Actually, let's make it two because it's split in half. Let's make it two. Yeah? Because we're splitting it in half, so I don't want to get decimals. No, thank you. Okay, here we go. If you split it in half, then the bottom piece becomes 1. This side still becomes a 2. So this is a 1. This is a 2, right? In a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you'd have 1 squared plus b squared is equal to 2 squared. Almost. Ah, ah. All right. So that would be 1 plus b squared equals 4 b squared is equal to tre, so that's why this is the root 3 side. So the long side is the root 3. That's where it comes from. That's it. Pythagorean theorem. Yay? So that's why it's a 1, 2, root 3. 
A, B, C. It's easy as one, two, root, three. Nope, okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, again, where is all that stuff, Miss Fleck? How do you know which is what? Is What's across each angle? 30 is the smallest angle, so the 30 is across on the 1 because that's the smallest side. Type in root 3 in your calculator if you have one. What is root 3 as a decimal? 1.7 something something, which is bigger than 1 but smaller than 2. But smaller than 90. So the 60 is across from the root 3 and the 90 is across from the 2. It's good. Okay, because you're going to have to find sine, cosine, and tangent based on this. Ha! Here we go! Yes! All right. Moving forward. Moving forward. Another perfect figure where all sides are the same, but this time there's four, is a... It's a square. Yeah, it's a square. A square is made up of 90 degree sides, or 90 degree angles and equal sides. There's a square. If you were to cut the square by its diagonal... Right? The angles would be split in half, so this becomes the 45 and the 45. Hence, the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay? Okay. Someday when you're telling this story to your kids, you'd be like, and once upon a time, a square was cut in half. Nope. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Keeping it simple. This is the one where you keep it simple. Since we're not cutting the sides in half, take a look. The sides kind of stay intact, right? We don't cut any of the sides in half. Let's keep it simple and call it one, right? So all the sides are one, okay? So when you get to this side of the triangle, this stays a one and this stays a one. We're trying to find the hypotenuse. In other words, the C in the A squared plus B squared equals C squared formula. So you got 1 squared plus 1 squared equals C squared. 1 plus 1 is 2. Is equal C squared. Is root 2. That's where it comes from. So root 2 is equal to C. So that diagonal is the root 2. Hence, when you look at 45, 45, it's a 1, 1, a root 2. All right. So... It's a 1, 2, root 3, or a 1, 1, root 2. All right. Okay. Mur, mur, mur. Yay. Okay. So once upon a time, there were six trig functions. Can you tell me all the trig functions from 30 degrees? Ah! All right. Here's what we do. A picture helps. A picture helps. I know you already have it on your page, but for this example, right, since we're finding the 30, can you fill in the sides? Here we go. What's across from 30? What is it? It's a 1. It's a 1, yeah. In just basic 30, 69, just taking out the x on all the other, right? This is the 1. What's across from 60? Root 3. And what's across from 90? 2. So my dears... For the six trig functions, let's find the first three. And remember, good old uh, so ka toa, right? And from 30, from 30, the one is the opposite. The root three is the adjacent, and two is the hypotenuse. So if you remember your so ka toa, then this is going to be so easy. Here we go. Sine of 30 is 1 over 2. Yes. That's it. Cosine of 30 is? Yes, love. Root 3 over 2. And tan of 30 is? 1 over root 3. We'll clean it up later. We'll clean it up later. All right. Here we go. B. <laughs> The flips, the flips. Here we go. Um, uh, sine is CSC of 30. CSC of 30 is 2 over 1. Good. Co, no, so, C, secant of 30 is 2 over root 3. Okay. And then cotangent, cot, 
is root 3 over 1. Yay? Okay, hang on. Let's clean it up. It's got to be pretty. It's going to be pretty. All right. Here we go. Sine 30, 1 half. Is that acceptable, answer? That's good. Root 3 over 2 is acceptable. What about tan 30? Yes! Multiply top and bottom by root 3, and it brings the root 3 to the top, and then just leaves 3 at the bottom. That's it. Okay? On the back of the book, everything will be rationalized. If you forget to rationalize, as long as it's accurate, good. But I want to make sure you know how to get to those answers in the back of the book. 2 over 1 is just 2. What would this thing be? 2 root 3 over 3. And last but not least, that's just root 3. Yay. Okay. Pictures help. Draw it out, map the 1, 2 root 3s, and you'll find anything. You could do this for 60, you could do this for 45, you can do it. Yay. All right. The homework quiz will include tonight's homework and the other night's homework. So everything from 2.1, because you just had a test, right? Yeah. Everything from 2.1. Um, you'll have you'll have home, or you have the homework quiz on tomorrow. Amen. Again. Okay. Here we go. You learned it. All right. Nine questions. Yeah. Yeah. You can do this. You can do this. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. The front side of the notes. I sorry. Here we go. All right. The last part. It's probably the most confusing part because it's a logic puzzle. It's a logic puzzle. Okay. And as long as you understand your ratios, right? Sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, and tan is y over x, right? And, and you also understand how a fraction works, okay? Think about a fraction with a numerator. If the numerator is bigger than denominator versus the denominator bigger, right? If you're dividing by a bigger number, your answer gets smaller, true? Okay, so numerator bigger than denominator is a big number, but numerator smaller than denominator is a small number. Got it? You understand? Like if you divide by a bigger number, you get a smaller number? Okay, all right. So if you understand this, right? You can also figure out logically what would happen to the trig function as an angle gets bigger or smaller. So take a look at what happens to this angle. You're here at angle A, right? As angle A increases, what also increases? The Y increases, right? As the angle gets taller, the Y value gets taller. R will always stay the same because R is always... One, right? R is always one. But the Y, as the angle gets bigger, it gets taller and taller. Like pretend R is your is your like your arm. That's never gonna change size. But you can change the angle of your size and that changes the height of your triangle. Okay? So as angle A increases, the Y will get bigger. But at, if the R stays the same, to keep it a triangle, it squishes into itself. So what decreases? The x will decrease. Okay. So here we go. Think about it this way for sine, cosine, and tangent. As sine increases, right, as sine gets bigger, remember sine is what over what? Y over R. It's y over r. So if y is getting bigger, is your number getting bigger or smaller? It's getting bigger. Because you're still dividing by the same r, your number is just getting bigger, so your your sign is going to increase as well. Yay? It's not bad. Okay. As the angle gets bigger, cosine is x over r. Since the x is squishing in, your numerator is getting smaller, so therefore it decreases. It decreases. Okay, here's the tricky one. Tangent. Does it? Does it? That's a good guess. Think it through. The Y is getting bigger, but the X is getting smaller. Okay. Would it? Would it be the same ratio? So, like, let's say... 
Let's say you have like 3 over 2. Type this in your calculator if you have it. What's 3 over 2? 1.5. 1. 1. Let's make the top bigger but the bottom smaller. So just moving it up by 1 would be like a 4 over 1. So it would be like it would squish into itself. What would that be? It would increase. Right? As long as the top increases, the whole thing increases. If the bottom increases, then the whole thing decreases. Yay? That's what I'm saying. It's a logic game. So what is increasing and where is it? As long as it's the top, that's what increases as well. Yay? Okay. Let's take a look. Here we go. What does this look like? All right. All right. Here we go. True or false, tan 25 is less than tan 23. Why? 25 is bigger than 23. So the tangent, the y is bigger, right? Tan is y is bigger. So tan 25 is bigger. Tan 25 would have a bigger y than tan 23. So this is obviously false. How can I check, Ms. Fleck? You can type it into your calculator. To check it. Remember, though, that on the test you won't have your calculator check it. You have to um, to to know the the logic of it. Yay. Um, cosecant. True. Cosecant of 44 is less than cosecant of 41 of 40. So here we go. Cosecant is r over y. So this is r over y versus this r over y. So this is like y1 and uh, y2. Which would have the bigger y, the 40 or the 44? 44. The 44. So if this y is bigger, then this whole thing is smaller. So if it's in the denominator, the number is smaller than the other one. True or false? True. 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 This is true. Okay. So depending on what, where the y is. Yes, love. Go ahead. Depends on where the bigger number is. If it's in the denominator, yes, then the whole number will be smaller. Yay? Okay. Here ends the lesson for reals now. All right. Good luck. I'm here. Ask me questions.